welcome to the NBS Show, episode number 202. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Kyle. Hey, Norman, how are you doing, buddy? Deja vu. Why do I have this feeling that we've done this before? I know. I don't know. I have a sneaky feeling we've had a conversation just a minute or two ago that might have gone very similarly to this one. Mm, but how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. I mean, I'll tell you what. News off the frying pan. Um, that's not the saying, is it? No, um... What, oh, what is it? Hot off the, hot off the presses. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> hot off the frying pan. And I am heading to the Hearth Warming, it's Hearth, Hearth Warming Con in uh, the Netherlands uh, at the end of February. So I've just booked all my stuff for that. So I'm really looking forward to that convention. Ah, Hearth Warming Con. That's awesome. I wish that people who do listen to this go visit you there and say hello and stuff. And I do hope that you do some journalism work for us. You know, interviews people. <laughs> uh, you're not getting paid enough for that no no hey look I'm just there as a fan and just to enjoy the convention it'll be good fun and I'm meeting a few uh, fellow bronies there that I haven't met before so it should be good fun uh, I'll also be meeting James there as well so that'll always be awesome So Wait, James is going? James is going wow okay I say hi if you meet him like he's an awesome dude oh yeah no totally I shall be saying hi and uh, I mean, yeah, the, loads of stuff is going to be happening. I'm really looking forward to it. This is like my first big international trip that I, I the last time I went international was in 2010 when I went to Romania, but I went with friends. This time mm. I'm actually, I booked the flight, the hotel, everything there is by me. No did, one else. Did you share a room with anyone? Uh, no, no, I'm just getting a room by myself. Ah, all right, all right. Uh, but. What are you suggesting? No, I'm just wondering because like when I went to Buck, I shared a room with James and also Mecca. So yeah, I was wondering that. <laughs> oh, no worries. No, no, I'm just uh, sharing by sharing, sharing with myself. Ah. <laughs> myself and my ego. <laughs> uh, your ego. Oh, by the way, also bring your 3DS and put it to straight pass. You'll be surprised with what you get. I'll tell you what, I'll have to buy a 3DS in order to try that. Wait, you don't have a 3DS? I sold it a year oh, or two ago. Okay. I I thought like the gaming guru that you are, you would have a 3DS. Yeah, well, I mean, with all the gaming stuff that I have, you would think, and I did, but it's just I wasn't really playing that often. I don't, I didn't really ever tend to play it, so it was a bit kind of useless me keeping a hold of it. Mm, understandable, understandable. But you do know who has a 3DS, right? Y- yes, I do actually. And who's that person? Is it? Uh... Can the special guest help me? <laughs> you mean Sapphire, right? Is your is she your special guest? No, she's just the guest host. Oh I was going to say it's like how long until I stop being special, Norman? <laughs> I've appeared like f- what, four times already? <laughs> well you're well let's just let's see how it goes. Um when you were on your own episode two oh one, you're the guest. When you were on the review show, you're the guest reviewer, and now you're just guest host. Well, yeah, but don't forget the other thing that we did oh, with yeah, that one. after the uh, episode thing. Still guest. I'm special. Yes, indeed, you are. Very special. Uh, In more ways than one. Uh, okay. <laughs> but you put up with me anyway. Indeed. But how are you doing? I'm doing very well, Norman. Yet again. Yay. I said deja vu. We, we've done this all before. Yes. Uh, so, what can I say? Like, you guys are doing well, I'm doing well, and the show's doing well. And talking about the show, looks like Season 6 is coming out in May. Oh, it's brilliant to see it actually finally come back, and we've been speculating on the date for a wee while, but it's nice to see it's actually going to be here not too far away. I mean, May 2016. I mean, that's only three months away. It's not long to wait around for. Mm-hmm. Did it? Mm-hmm. Uh, like, who said it was... Like, I think, Sapphire, you said it was in... The, April. Yeah, I yeah, was wrong. And then somehow, who who corrected you? Silver, was it? Saying that spring has a long line until... When was it again? Uh, what was it? I, I don't know. How long is spring? Spring is usually lasting from, like, March to early June. Yeah, so I think... Silver said that, yeah, it could be at the end of June, for all we know. Yeah. yeah. But now we got a confirmed date, which is May, so that's good. Yeah, really. I was hoping it would be longer, like sometime in August, at least. So, like, it would give us all time to 
do other things and whatnot and just not focus on pony. But no, no, Hasbro, Hasbro must give all the bronies who are obsessed with nothing but My Little Pony their season due to high demand. Meanwhile, everybody else in the world is going, yay, more pony! Then there's the analysis community is like getting off their hammocks and getting stressed and worked and whatnot. Uh, you know what? I'm glad I'm not in that boat because, I don't know, I'm kind of in it, but I'm not because of the format of my show. But I'm just glad we're getting more and I'm just glad that I don't do videos. <laughs> Well, I'm also kind of glad we're doing this, or at least I'll be on more often mm. with this, because then I have an excuse to why I'm not, like, continuously doing, like, reviews. <laughs> because, uh, like I said before, I only do reviews when I feel uh, like it. True that, true that. You Anyways, that. Well, how about we move on to, um, you know. Yeah, let's see, what's on the next? Because the whole thing for... Uh, this season six is exploring Equestria and whatnot. And after season six, there's going to be Equestria Girls movie. So the movie, well, looks like <laughs> it's coming in this fall. Like everything here is like, wow. It's just quick to the snap. Yeah, I know. It's back to back to back. Like I'm happy, but wow, leave nothing to the imagination with you. Mm-hmm. And as per usual, <sighs> uh, this year's uh, tagline is Legend of Everfree. So the human ponies or the human girls are going to go exploring the Everfree forest. Yay. Oh, gee. Yeah, and it's, I, what I find quite interesting is that they're going to put out like uh, 10 minutes of the show up on YouTube before the episode comes out. Ah, uh, yeah. So there's, so there's going to be a bit of a preview. That's but, what they the, did like, for the Friendship Games. Now you see, this is the thing, because like, I'm not watched the um, the spin-off shows like Friendship Games and all the rest of it and Equestria Girls, so this is kind of a little bit out of my comfort zone, so I never realized they'd um, done that as well. Well, you should try it out. It's pretty fun. I, wa- Ooh, I shall have to investigate at some point. Although, actually, Jonathan, I might actually watch it on Netflix, because uh, apparently they're, they're guessing it before Discovery. <laughs> yeah, that, that's strange. Like, usually Discovery's the one that kind of has the showing stuff and whatnot, but no, next day is getting it first. Sapphire, have you watched any of the Equestria Girls things? Oh yeah, I've, I watch Equestria Girls. Well, I haven't seen anything trailer-wise for like this Legends of Equestria thing. I'm not sure if there are any trailers, but oh boy, um, <laughs> how do I say it? Like, uh, what was the question again? <laughs> Have you seen any of the Equestria Girls things? Like the first one, second, uh, and third? Legends of Every Free, other than the circle, no, no, I have not. Although, I do like the way Flare Chai is designed. It looks rather tribal and whatnot, and I like it. Yeah. As for this one, it's still new. We got no idea. Usually, Toys are going to come out, so yay. And also a good movie, I hope. Uh, mm. I just don't know what to say. Like, each time a series comes out or a season comes out, movie comes out too. So I'm happy. Like, yay. I do wonder who they're going to voice or who's going to voice what in the new one. Like, they have to bring in something awesome to the roster. Uh, but talking about rosters, you know that 2017 Pony movie that's coming out like next year? Oh, yeah. It looks like they got Emily Blunt on. So, yay? Oh boy, Emily Blunt. I'm not, I'm not a fan of her work. Like, I looked over, like, her roles in previous films. Uh... Well, when you have Nomeo and Juliet on your line of movies, you have to cringe at the thought of this being in a My Little Pony movie. For me, I don't see a big deal, like, in it. Well, she does do a lot of, well, let's just say that she's expensive and I hope Hasbro thinks it's really worth it. If not, yeah. But she's in some good shows like The Edge of Tomorrow and some other shows that, well, like The Devil with Prada. I heard that's a good one. Oh, I've yeah, heard no, of that movie. I haven't seen it. Although, yeah. Yeah. 
And she was in the Muppets as well, and some of Vision Yemen. Like, she's been in a lot of great things. But, Jono, the thing that I enjoy about this announcement isn't actually Emily Blunt. It isn't even, uh, you know, the star power, anything like that. It's the fact that I get to see great headlines in the news related to Emily Blunt and My Little Pony. And it is brilliant. Like, for example, this is just on Google. This is just the top three, or top two, actually, news articles for Emily Blunt and My Little Pony. Because this is great. It's just puns, and and there's like the first one. It isn't funny, but to me, it just sounds funny. And like maybe you can agree with me on this. And it just and it, the headline is Emily Blunt to sound horse in My Little Pony the movie. <laughs> what to sound horse? I like that as a phrase. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, yeah, sound, sounding horse. Yes. Mm-hmm. And the second article that I can see is Emily Blunt saddles up for My Little Pony. But that just isn't as funny as Sound Horse. Uh, said a lot, yeah. God. The puns. Yeah. The puns are strong. We should get Ty here so he can pun it up. Oh, I know. Him and I can pun it all day long. Oh, yeah, caramba. I thought being punny was Silver Cole's job. Oh, well, that is job too. They, they, them three can pun it up all day long. <laughs> but anyway, um, if Hasbro thinks that Emily Blunt is a good role for MLP, I guess why not, right? Because they did got who, um, Weirel and John Delancey and also Lena Hall. Lena Hall was kind of an unknown for us, so she did a good job. Mm-hmm. So yeah, let's just wait and see what Emily Blunt can do. But, have you guys ever wondered, like, have you guys ever seen the toys? Like, sorry to sound a bit offensive here, uh, Sapphire, but they're kind of girly girl kind of toys. Uh, it's not really offensive. Yeah, just didn't want to hurt your feelings. But yeah, they're kind of not... I'm so offended! Ah, flailing of the arms! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh no, but... Well, it looks like Hasbro's taking the cue from the fans and saying that, hey, you know what? We have this other demographic of audience who likes to play with our toys. Why not let's, why not give them something that they can really enjoy? And it seems that Hasbro is pushing for cross-gender toys with the Guardians of Harmony idea. And yeah, it looks like they're really doing something with this. Oh yeah, they look amazing. Especially with like Nightmare Moon and Celestia. Those look epic. Those look fan made, if anything. Yeah, those are figures. Those are figures that I would buy. Like, those are good. Like, uh, who else? Oh yeah. Who, let me think. Um, vinyl, vinyl, vinyl. Uh, yeah, Hot Topic has them, uh, Funko vinyls. And they're kind of cheap for you guys. Like what, they're 10 bucks a pop, something like that? Mm-hmm. And well, yeah, for you guys it's cheap, but for me, ah, uh, just imagine the shipping cost and import price. Not cheap, not cheap. Oh yeah, no, I can totally imagine that being a right stinging yeah. mess. Mm-hmm. But since this is coming out, and Malaysia does have Hasbro localized and stuff, who knows? This might be coming to my country and at uh, affordable price, sixty bucks. Why not? Like, I'll buy both of them. Celestia and Nightmare Moon. Let's go. From the looks of it, they look very well crafted, and it looks like Hasbro is kind of learning their lesson when it comes to, like, their toys, in a way. Then again, this is made by another company, Pulse. So we'll have to see how that goes when it comes to, like, the uh, craftsmanship as well as the, um, like, how the toys will hold up. Hmm, okay. I don't know about uh another company, but I don't know if this is even another subdivision. Like, this could be just some kind of premiere thingy, whatever it is. Like, uh, Hasbro Pulse, Pulse. I think this is just a website thingy. Like, Hasbro Pulse is just one of their subdivision website. So, yeah, it's still under Hasbro Toys. But still, toys are coming out. And technically, nobody really wants to buy figures, if you think about it. Except for the Japanese, because anime. Yeah. But still, like coming out well, for Western there are audience. Americans who will like buy figurines and whatnot. So mm. don't like 
you know. Still knocking. Yeah, true that. But still, like, if you think about it, My Little Pony figures, age demographic, not really there to buy figures, but somehow they're doing it. And I think they're doing it for the little ones and also the big guys. So, yeah, I can't wait. Any of you have the official My Little Pony brushables and whatnot? Yeah, I have one. I actually took a uh, Fluttershy brushable and made my own little, um, you know, pony thing All out right. of that. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> wow, Fluttershy, you're evil. But if you look at the new toys, they have opposable limbs. So that's cool. And their hair, it's not made out of synthetic hair. Thingy. It looks molded plastic with their shapes. So this is going to be cool. I can't wait to see how it really looks like. So, Kyle, what do you think of the situation in hand? Well, what I think of the situation at hand, so far, is that, well, I mean, the toys are fantastic. I mean, they look pretty, they look pretty snazzy. And I'm, oh, it'll certainly be great to see them in the shops. I certainly know Sugar Dove and a fair few of my friends will be delighted with them and will certainly buy them to put them on their shelves and all the rest of it. But I, you know, I appreciate the fact that they're, you know, trying to, you know, change the sort of, uh, what you call it, the gender norm of what you expect with My Little Pony toys, and they're challenging it just a wee bit. Even if it is this kind of purely for marketing purposes and whatnot, it's a nice wee change. And I'll be curious to see exactly how it actually, um, how it fervors on. Well, let's just hope that it goes well, because if people do buy them, that means they're getting great response and they'll make more. So, well, that's the news for this week. It's a pretty short one. And yeah, I guess think that everyone's a bit tired and knackered and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's cool, it's cool. But anywho, let's go to my favorite time on the show. And that's email. Email time. Emails. Yes, if you want to send us email, you can send it at com. We'll read them out on the show. If you want to ask us anything... Anything really, like if you want to ask me, Sapphire, something, or even Kyle a question, just email it and we'll try and answer it. So anyway, um, nothing new, still from CRC Bruni, and he asked, What do you think Equestria Girls 4 will be about? And, well, we kind of reported on it. It's all about camping and stuff. So, yay! (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God. It's turning into the Barbie movies. Oh, help. Which help one? Help us all. Like the uh, Legends of Equestria? Is that... No, no, no. Which Barbie movie? Series. No, Legends of Equestria is the team and it's about camping and I think they camp in the Everfree Forest. But I want to know, like, which Barbie movie? Are you talking about the one we, that we uh, talked about? Just any Barbie movie. Like, there, there's a friggin' Barbie movie about everything. Oh, my God. Yeah, but didn't we mention it on the last review show where Barbie's trying to take over the world? Um, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Which is also a scary thought. No fun. But yeah, Equestria Girls 4 camping trip. Why not, right? It's going to be fun. Oh, yeah. Oh, Definitely. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Kyle, I want you to do your homework. Watch most of the <laughs> Equestria Girls movie. And I want you to report on what you think on it, because you haven't watched it, right? I haven't watched it. No, actually, drawing us up, what I'm intending to do is over the next two weeks, I'm planning on having a bit of an MLP binge and try and get through it all. So I'm going to get through season five and I'm going to get through, if I can, uh, some of the spin-off material as well. So uh, fingers crossed I will be able to um, report back with a full report at some point in the future. Alrighty then, because I really want to know, because most of the fandom don't really like My Little Pony in general. Sorry, don't really like Equestria Girls in general. I was about to say that, I was about to say that. I was going to say, it's like, why are you a pony if you don't like My Little Pony? (laughs) I don't know. How safe hating must we be that we're in a fandom (laughs) that we hate? Uh... Just like... I I like My Little Pony. I hate My Little Pony. Why do you like it? Because I can hate it. Why? (laughs) Well, listen, like, you don't want to ask. Oh, my doors are staying in, aren't they? Uh, but anyway, <laughs> still, like, do report in. And the next question is, if there will be a very evil villain coming Equestria once again to destroy that world. Oh my god, same friggin' plotline. Hasbro, 
Do something new with your formula. The, you don't have the same excuse as Nintendo. You are not allowed to have this. I wish they did something new. I mean, with Starlight Glimmer, they tried to do something new, but they didn't. Ugh. Kind of Ugh. new with how they handled the ending, but that's another story for a different day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's definitely, I mean, that's the one thing with shows, particularly shows that are relatively long running. I mean, we're on to, what, season six, they've already done a hundred odd episodes. Uh, what, I, what I think of in terms of shows that tend to have the same sort of formula in and out that are good shows, one that's on top of my head is House. <laughs> Like, does anyone remember House? Yeah. If you haven't watched House, it's basically, it was an American show, starred Hugh Laurie, British guy playing an American, did it brilliantly, as a... Oh yeah, I know him. Yeah. Yeah. House. As a, what was it, yeah, as a doctor in a hospital, very sarcastic, makes a lot of jokes, it's really funny. And, uh, but basically, the every single episode of House is the exact same, right? You've got a patient, he's suddenly ill. So what happens is they take him to the hospital, they give him some medication, they don't, they don't quite get him better. Suddenly he gets a bit worse. They give him some medication. He gets better. He gets worse. He gets really worse. He gets slightly better. Then he suddenly goes really bad. Oh no, he's about to die. House has an epiphany. Suddenly, he's better. That is 220 episodes of House. And that's the formula that they're running with, and it kind of works. Another show where a great evil comes about is Doctor Who. Hmm. Any Whovian? Oh, yeah. No? No, I'm not a Whovian. Uh. I was kind of turned off because one, there are too many episodes and another thing was like back in high school, there was this one kid I knew who was obsessed with Doctor Who. Like he'd come to school wearing a Doctor Who outfit. Oh, wow. Uh, oh, well. Yeah. But in general, Doctor Who and the villains, they're kind of interesting the way that he handles it. Like... Each episode deals with some specific kind of evil, and he saves the day. And this is what, running a course of 13 to 12 episodes, was it? So, Something like that. Yeah, so it, it, each episode is pretty interesting. And the way the Doctor solves it was pretty cool too. Uh, but anyway, that's email for this week, and I technically got nothing more to say, uh, maybe except for if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbsshow.gmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at mbsshow. So what we'll tweet about this episode and any future episodes and so on. And you can also reach me at Norman Sanzo. I tweet about toys, food, and whatever tickles my fancy. And tickling my fancy for this week is going to be Street Fighter V. Yes, it's coming out. And I am very excited for it. And Kyle, where can I catch you? Oh, well, you can find me on uh, Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Kyle McCall, where you'll find all my updates and all the pony stuff I'm doing, which will be, of course, MBS show, Creative Vibes, and in a couple of weeks, uh, the Heartwarming Con, where I'll do some nice updates there as well. Um, you could also find Creative Vibes, the show I do on uh, the Helm Bronies YouTube channel and our Facebook group as well. Uh, and I think that's all the other fun things I've got going on at the moment. I feel like there's something big that I fail to mention. Like, there's like some sort of big site somewhere that if I turn around, I'm going to find it and go, Oh, wait, oh, hang on, there's this place as well. I wonder <laughs> what. Oh, well, once you, rem- once you remember, I guess you can save it for next week, probably. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Sapphire, where can I catch you? Well, let's see. You can find me on Twitter, Facebook... YouTube, Patreon, and whatnot. Just look up Anime Christie. Also, look me up on DeviantArt. My commissions are closed right now, but they will be open back up in March. Also, I have pl- big plans to going on to to go to BronyCon in um, July, early later this year. So, if you're going, you can always come up to me and say hi, because I will likely have enough money with how much people love my art. Yay. I wish I could go to BronyCon. Uh, I know. I would hug you. I would hug you and squeeze you and love you and then pet your bald head. Oh, wait. No, that's <laughs> over. <laughs> Either yeah. way, I'd be petting your head or stroking your mustache if you have one. I don't know. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, maybe next year. That's weird. I like to touch people. <laughs> no comment. And more ways than one. Oh, no comment. And also please subscribe and rate <laughs> us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. And also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on BonnieVilleLive.com. Links are in the show notes. So anyway, I have been Norman Senzo. I've been Kyle McCall. 
And I be Sapphire Heartsong, aka Blue Keyframe. Yay. Wait, no, not yay. Yeah, like, what? It's a running gag between us. I'll explain it later. <laughs> oh, inside jokes, people. <laughs> Anywho, we'll guys see you next week for another amazing episode of the NBS show. See you guys later. Bye. Bye. Bye bye.